So today we start again together and uh, I, I like uh, to share with you some, con <coughs> some con consideration about the multicolor panel design. So yesterday we, we talked about the optimal setting. Today we talk about the choice of a reagent and the design of the experiment before the experiment itself. The sound consideration, preliminary consideration, multicolor is a powerful tool uh, thanks to development of advanced flow cytometer. So actually we have an instrument that um, uh, has uh, uh, many, many parameters. Uh, we can uh, think that we start uh, more or less 20 years ago with two colors, and now we reach uh, the possibility to cover almost 50 colors. So as you can imagine, the complexity increases a lot. So, uh, this tool is powerful, but uh, it's very complex, and we, are, uh, we have to become confident with manage of this information, and uh, the um, results we can obtain. Uh, as we, we said yesterday, the data quality, so the success for your experiment, depends uh, on the proper panel design and obviously from the optimization of instrument setup. So, uh, after this introduction that uh, I hope don't scare you, but uh, uh, the panel design following some simple rules can be easier than we expect. Which are these rules? First rule, pale brightness fluorochrome on specificity with the lowest antigen density. In this simple uh, sentence, uh, there are two requests for you. You have to know the reagent, you have to know the biology of your sample. Is the only requirement to can uh, apply this rule. Then uh, we have to minimize the spectral overlap and spread of signals to avoid the loss of resolution. In flow cytometry, we can uh, we can uh, have uh, two questions. I want to individuate a very small uh, population, for example, in a, a very, very uh, minimal population in a pathology, if you work uh, in, uh, for example, leukemia and, and lymphoma fields, uh, or also in environment research, uh, if I want to be sure that the water is safe. So two different fields, but the same question. I want to be sure that no elements or very poor elements are present in our samples. On the other, on the other side, the resolution is very important to can individuate dim antigen. As we say yesterday, some antigen in biology, usually linear antigen, are very high expressive but a lot of them are not so high, and the question mark is to individuate well to can say, okay, it is expressed or not. Then, finally, we can consider three step reagent, fluorochrome, biology, the cell type, the characteristic of the antigen, and obviously the instrument the compatibility of the instrument, laser, detector, and so on. First, we start from the reagent. We have to, we, it's preferable to know what we use. Actually, why? Because the choice of fluorochrome dye is very important to reveal the biology of the sample. In this slide, you can see different plots using a CD3 and different 
CD197 in different fluorochrome, from very bright to dim fluorochrome. You can see that in this situation, we can discriminate a double positive population and also all the steps of the maturation. In this and this situation, the two populations are near and we can see what is in the between. So if my interest is to isolate this, in this case I can't. So this is the importance to know the dye we use in your experiment. In the last years, the introduction of new fluorochrome increased a lot the number of dye we can find in many catalogs. I refer to the D catalog. Actually, we have also almost 40 fluorochrome. And uh, the improve in this uh, uh, number of fluorochrome derived from the introduction of cerigen polymers, a synthetic uh, dye that uh, have the structure as polymer and any monomer work as an enhancer. So the principle is a threat, the um, transfer of energy. And this type of new dye uh, give us the possibility to differentiate the laser situation and also the emission. To arrive a situation of this, actually, we have a lot of choice, so the question is uh, what is the best for my condition? What is the best combination? Uh, so, in general, we can divide the fluorochrome into four classes, into four groups, uh, as uh, classified as very bright, the most uh, um, powerful. Uh, fluorochrome, what uh, uh, them, uh, they announce uh, the positivity of uh, a staining, bright, moderate, and dim. Remember that uh, inside the panel design we need both very bright or bright uh, fluorochrome, but also moderate and dim, because there is a balance between the brightness of the fluorochrome the antigen expression by from the cells. So, the next step, uh, preview the knowledge of your samples, so the biology of your samples. And uh, I have to know, sorry, antigen expression, it is possible, and the co-expression. In general, antigen can be divided in three classes, primary, lineage, antigen, as a CD3, CD4, CD19, and etc. Seca secondary antigen that uh, are high expressed but with heterogeneous expression. And finally, below antigen, that can induce, are not always present, are not constitutive, but can induce after a stimulation, for example, and can be different uh, in different population. For example, the 25 uh, antigen is normal, low express in always in a faulty cells or B cells, and it can be upregulated after stimulation of activation of the immune system. And uh, the importance also to individuate the light population. This is the expression of CD95, is a, a marker for uh, exhaustion of cells. And if we will look total T cells, we can distinguish different level of expression. If I share these uh, in the three different subpopulations, we can distinguish that uh, naive memory and the factor T cells 
express different level of this matter. In this sense, we have a, a more sensibility if we, we look for the right population. The same for inside the three right population for naive and abductor. So the first rule is a very simple, require, as I said, the knowledge of the reagent and the biology. If a reagent knowledge is, uh, um, is made available from many websites looking for in, uh, in um, online documents, uh, often the antigen density is not so easy to add. Actually, BD are, um, are, um, are reading a project uh, named uh, Antigen Density Project to characterize many of, an, of, the, of many of the antigen on leukocyte uh, population. Our preview, uh, our first focus in general is immunology and hematology because there is a strict marriage between flow cytometry and these fields. But obviously, I can understand that not all of you work these topics, but uh, is, is can, is, this can help us to understand. And in base of this project, we can consider high antigen that have an antigen expression high than uh, uh, 50,000 molecules for cells, mid and low. And at the end of the project, we, uh, uh, we are waiting for, for, for a chart of this type uh, as a gene chip expression, maybe more familiar for most of you, where we can uh, differentiate the expression on different subpopulation in a human context. So you can see CD40, uh, sorry, a monocyte, uh, NK, and so on. Then, after the fluorochrome and the biology, a look to the instrument. What, we, what do I mean? We, know to, we, we have to know if uh, the fluorochrome choice is compatible with the instrument being used. What, uh, for example, if I use a caliber, and I want to use a BB421, a violet dye, is not the right choice because I don't have the laser, and I don't have the collection detector to see. Configuration, and maybe in, for some instrument, we can uh, wide the possibility with different upgrade of our configuration. So, another mm, question in panel design we have to consider is the different concept of resolution and the ground. We can define resolution, the degree to which a flow cytometer can distinguish dim stained cell from unstained cells. And we can be challenging in a polychromatic scenario. Yesterday, some of you asked, what is the right voltage? What is the best choice? And the answer you receive is not only this. It's, this, can be, this can be good, also this can be good, because of there is different consideration. In the next plot I show you, we see the three different situations. This is uh, the theoretical and best situation I want to see. I want to have a negative with low background and a clear resolution with a dim and high stain population. In the next, <coughs> in the next um, plot, histogram, you can see that the negative have, has a very high background but also in this situation where the background is a, has mean value low, 
the resolution is good. So we, have, we want to avoid to have this situation in our panel design. Then, the next uh, rule suggests us to avoid, when as possible, spillover and the spread of signals. The, the source of spillover can be free. The first one is very common, we know, between adjacent detectors, FITSI and PE, for example. The second source is the residual fluorescence in tandem combination. Tandem dye are, um, are made from two molecules that, has, that have complementary spectral characteristic. The transfer of energy is not total, is not an ideal system. So we have a little, if chloroform is good, only a little, residual fluorescence of the first part of the molecule. But we have to consider this when we combine our antigen. And the third source of spillover is the cross excitation. For example, uh, when uh, I use PCY5 in a multicolor, in a multilaser instrument that have both blue and red laser, PCY5 is highly strongly cross excitated by the red laser. We have to consider this because when the cell um, is excited by the red laser, it emits also when it's not preview. Then, what, what is the result of this spillover and spread? If you will look at a classical, uh, a classical uh, couple has a FITSI and PE, and we look at different level of expression in PE signal, we see that uh, the population is always very, very um, little. And we don't have problem to identify a double positive here, here, or here. But uh, if we move uh, in another couple, for example, P and P C CF 594, you look at the difference between the image before. I, I, um, I put together to emphasize, to underline these results. This is the spread. Just to have a clear idea what I mean. If I have a double positive here, I can't resolve well. It's the dangerous situation that I want to avoid. Another <coughs> option that can influence the spread is the antigen density, because as we see before, if the signal is here, is clear, clear, good, but if my, um, my choice is for a very strong antigen, the dispersion, the, the spread is very high. Well, considering all these all these uh, consideration, all these uh, um, suggestion, we have to choose careful, carefully the fluorochrome, the antigen inside the panel, considering, considering also the co-expression or mutual or exclusive expression of antigen in our sample. Two, <coughs> Better understand uh, this concept, uh, I, I, go. I want to uh, propose you a very simple panel design for t red cells. Maybe most of you know this type uh, of panel. Uh, t red are uh, CD4, is a, a more wide panel in, uh, in truth, uh, it's for 
TRAG and TF factory and memory subset. The antigen is a CD3, CD4, CD8 as a lineage, CD25 and CD127 to identify TRAG. This two antigen is useful to identify the different subset of T cells. And finally, this one can uh, further differentiate inside the subset uh, the status of the cells. The group of antigen can divide in three groups, primary, lineage, secondary, high express antigen, and finally, the very the low or the most heterogeneous uh, antigen inside the population. The instrument uh, I propose is a Canto 2 with free laser 8 color. It's a very more common uh, instrument. Now, we look at uh, the strategy, the gating strategy I want to apply to my samples. I have uh, the antigen data from literature. Is a very uh, common panel actually. Then the first step is, and uh, I keep in my in I keep in my hands uh, the chart uh, with a different brightness uh, of fluorochrome. The first rule you remember is to abide couple eye expression with dim anti with dim fluorochrome and. Uh, low expression with, with <coughs> sorry <coughs> sorry <laughs> with um, with very high uh, with very bright uh, fluorochrome so we list uh, on the left uh, the antigen, on the right, uh, the fluorochrome, the laser of fluorochrome uh, are excited, and then the first rule is very easy. I combine and order the antigen and the assignment to the fluorochrome using a very simple rule. Then, once uh, I did this, uh, I group uh, the different antigen for co-expression. So, a first cluster for TREG, the second for laser, sorry, not for co-expression, and look for the critical point. For example, I want to look if any group of antigen receive cross-excitation by the other laser. So, first, I can give a very simple change to split the same group of antigen for the same population from in different array, different laser, different collection, to minimize the first source of spillover. Then I can do another change just to sharing better. And then I have the first proposal for your panel. Before to say, okay, that's the final panel, I want to order this reagent, I want to do another check. Antigen relieved by the red laser. I cross if violet or blue laser can excite them and create overlap. In this case, no overlap, no cross-excitation cross is uh, revealed. So, okay, is good. Next, uh, away. Then, 
I check also the violet dyes and antigen couple and also for this no problem derived from blue and violet so it's a good choice the next one the blue laser reveal a little cross excitation and the creation of spectral overlap overlapping in two fluorochrome when red laser works so i have to review this choice in particular per cp and pcy7 have the same emission um, spectra or similar not the same of apc and apc h7 so i have to check the two combination so what we have to do this and this what we have in the two different channel in apc h7 we have cd44 cd4 sorry and in pcy7 we have choice CCR7. Since CD4 is higher than CCR7, no problem in affecting the resolution of CCR7. So in this case, I cannot change CCR conjugation and to obtain a good result. On the other hand, if we consider APC and per CP CY5.5, we have a different situation. We have a low molecule and a very strong antigen, and this can affect the resolution of CD127. In this case, it suggests to find an optional conjugation for CD3. So I come back to my panel, to my middle proposal. I look for this and I can do a very simple change, for example, CD3 and CD8. Why? Because I don't look for CD127 or CD8 population. And maybe I can do another change to best, uh, to best improve our resolution. So through three different steps, theoretical, that usually we have to go to the bench and to test, but I obtain a theoretical optimized panel. Our conclusion is that uh, the three top configuration in optical panel design we have to keep in mind fluorochrome brightness, antigen density and the co-expression, and finally the spread the spillover on different laser. Uh, what is the answer that today we have uh, using a multi-laser instrument? Uh, on one side, I have an instrument with a potential 20 color. Okay, I want to, to do 20 color panel. On the other side, I can set up a simple panel spreading the fluorochrome and the antigen and the, uh, of the marker through different array. A very simple example for you. When we began to start, we were to work with flow cytometry. The best couple, the preferred couple, is PC and PE. But uh, in different uh, situations, this is not the best choice because the compensation can be high. Also, working with Calibur, suggestion is okay. You choose P in the APC because you have two different laser. Fluorochrome that doesn't that don't overlap between each other, bright signals, and very simple resolution of your data. You imagine in a more complex uh, scenario, you can split, for example, in X20 instrument, you can have five laser. I have to do a five 
fun, five color funnel, one color, one antigen for laser in the emission that don't inter don't uh, um, don't uh, uh, noise each other. And I have a very simple and very very accurate uh, resolution of my funnel. Finally, which is uh, the flow work we can follow. We have two markers, marker A and marker B. They are co-expressed. No, no problem. We can, I can choose, I have more flexibility in the choice. If yes, okay, relative expression. We consider A uh, higher than B or, or, or the opposite situation. Choose reagent. For B, I want to use a bright fluorochrome. And for A, E, sorry, A, uh, I want to choose a dim fluorochrome that minimizes the spread population. Okay, you go to the flow cytometry, test. If the good resolution is obtained, okay, you reach your results. Differently, we have to come back and revalutate or consider option to, uh, to this reagent. This approach in a polychromatic flow cytometry is uh, very recommended because uh, the experiment starts from the bench, not only when you are on the flow cytometry. So consider to design your project, your panel, before to go to the flow cytometry. In, in, in my feeling, in, to be honest, I, I, I suggest to keep in mind these, uh, these rules, to have uh, near your desk uh, this one. Now, uh, also. A chart of this type. Why? Because we can't remember all the dye are available. So we can we can be helped. And my suggestion is keep in mind the rules and just a suggestion to remember the choice how to cho how to choose the agent. So it's clear. Today are, are you sleeping? <laughs> <laughs> Questions? I have a question about antigen density. Yes. How do you decide if primary and secondary is there any cut value for cutoff value for determining if it's primary antigen and secondary or data? How to decide? Yeah, so that's a very good question. Uh, the project uh, is uh, was leading using uh, using uh, a method that is uh, uh, a quantity bright method. Um, this uh, method um, include uh, bits conjugated to a, a no number of fluorochrome. So imagine you you run um, a standard curve and then the extrapolated the antigen density paragonating the fluorescence of the cells and the fluorescence of the of a, of, a, of a bits. Uh, which category is a, 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 a larger replication? So as you as we can see in this in this project the research Department of BD divide in this three group, uh, um, establishing the cutoff with 15,000 between one and 50,000. If you look at the a plot, uh, this is uh, 
the fourth decade, last decade. This is in the middle of the plot and this is very, very low. So is a, this is the rule they follow in, a, in a differentiated uh, the, the antigen density. Is this letter is quite published or is it? Are we are waiting just uh, uh, from, uh, uh, they are working, they are already finished to work to this project. Uh, some, uh, some uh, data are already available. For example, this, uh, this, uh, this picture is drawn by a, a, a brochure of BD, so it's available. But soon you can uh, find in um, panel design tool that BD uh, publish on uh, its website. So we have to wait, but soon is yeah. Uh, in the actual version of a panel design tool, um, the user has to input the, 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 the no? You don't say the name? Okay, sorry. Um, the user has to input the, the level of antigen density and the investigating strategy. Not fully automated. Not yet. Is it being developed for mouse as well? Uh, I don't know actually if they're working also for mouse or not, to be honest. Yeah. Full be honest, okay? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Another question. Uh, if this project goes down with all the commercial available uh, drug forms, or is it specific? So it's specific for BD drug For BD drug, okay. Obviously, the rule. You can apply to full chloroform, so you can match uh, the different chloroform of different pharma. But uh, the internal tool, any 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 pharma is the one. I'm sorry. <laughs> I lost one point in the presentation. I mean, the last, uh, the last criteria you have swapped to, uh, to chloroform, and I, I did not get the, the reason for which you choose to. What? In the, the last. Yes. yes. Oh. Because at some point it seems that you have contradicted the, the initial uh, assumption. Because one. Visa? Uh, because one, uh, well, there was a, a, I don't know how to say it, uh, the, the, the scale of, of, choice, of choice was first uh, assigned uh, stronger mm -hmm. to uh, to, to low expression and beyond. And in the end, it, it, uh, they have been swapped to have a, can you, what is the last? The last one? Yes, yes. That's the uh, uh, okay. no, I think you put in the eight in place of the three. Is the optimization you consider that both C D three and C D eight are lineage antigen. So is it true that uh, BV 510 is uh, a bit lower than per CP CY 5.5? But in this case, uh, the disadvantage you have to maintain CD3 in this situation penalize this. So, which this simple change, uh, you can optimize the resolution of it. CD3 and CD8. Uh, you can see well uh, all, always, uh, 
almost always. Uh, but if you keep, uh, oh sorry, this arrangement, uh, this penalize uh, the resolution of this. Remember that your T reg are CD3 and CD4. So this is positive uh, and this create overlap uh, in this. And the spread is um, higher. So the starting point is correct. I couple low antigen with bright fluorochrome. But at the final, I can't be so uh, strict to this rule. I have to keep in mind uh, the final resolution and uh, the combination uh, in the total panel. Sorry? The symptom point is not different. The symptom point is not different. Sorry. I didn't get that out of work. Oh. Sorry. It's not. It's very simple. These uh, fluorochrome are synthetic polymer. Characterized by very brightness. And uh, as you've seen, they have a lateral chain, uh, and any monomer in the chain uh, has uh, um, work as an enhancer. So instead, you have only one molecule of fluorochrome, more or less. Uh, I'm not a chemistry, but uh, just to give uh, you a uh, more, more uh, idea, uh, idea. It can enhance the flexibility and the, um, the, the brightness of the fluorochrome. If I, I don't show you an, a slide, but because I don't know if you know them or not. But if you consider, if you look at these slides, there is a, a, new, a new ranking of a fluorochrome. And historically, we know as P is the king of fluorochrome. Actually, BV421 is a very, very good choice, alternative choice to P, with some uh, with some improvement. Uh, uh, violet laser produce less background. Why? Because uh, in nature, more or less, uh, we don't have molecule that uh, absorb in this line. So you can reduce uh, uh, the auto, auto fluorescence. And uh, this situation is uh, increase is better when you use ultraviolet laser, for example. So for to analyze uh, uh, teal, in instrument with uh, UV laser, I suggest <laughs> often the use of a CD45 in BUV 395. Why? Because this fluorochrome have a very a very uh, short uh, emission, and you don't generate overlap in the other fluorochrome. So is a is the potential of new fluor of new of new polychromatic flow cytometry. In fact, also in this uh, in this slide, uh, you can find some fluorochrome design as that are not commercial fluorochrome. <laughs> you can find them in a website of BD. These are also prototype that actually we produce only as custom request, but we don't push because in this moment are not, they are not convenient for you. This is the sense. As you know, any custom reagent is more expensive than a catalog of reagent. But uh, we, can, we can reach uh, so many colors introducing new fluorochrome. The polychromatic uh, flow cytometry is not uh, increased by, by a very, very high number of laser. Major what what uh, 
it's very expensive for uh, any instrument uh, to have 20 lasers. But uh, we have five or more lasers, six or seven, and 50 color. So the modulation of uh, new flow cytology, flow cytology is different uh, in, uh, in the development of reagent and instrument. How does all this apply to that case? Oh, it, oh, in general, <laughs> I suggest to use uh, as dump channel, the channel, the dimmer the dimmest channel, and uh, or the channel that produce more spread. So, for example, for in a red laser, if you have a free detector, in general, you can have uh, you have uh, APC. APC R700 or uh, Alexa 700 and APC H7. APC, this detector are very, very near each other. So sometimes I suggest the use of a um, fixable viability stain uh, 700 to exclude, uh, uh, to exclude the dead cells. So the choice could be or the dimmest or the channel that produces more interference with other. In this case, uh, when I don't know, or I, don't, uh, I don't have any preliminary uh, information from literature or uh, other source, uh, I suggest to keep uh, some brilliant uh, fluorochrome. Because uh, I can uh, uh, decrease the PMT, but I can't enhance uh, the natural fluorescence of cells. And also because if, uh, if the signal is very bright, as I say, I can uh, download uh, the, the gain of the TNT, but uh, if uh, the signal is dim, and uh, I can to increase the PMT, but I prefer to starting to, to choose uh, a PE, a BV 421 or hover for the question mark uh, marker in my panel. You're welcome. Um, have you had a suggestion about the, uh, the choice of the clone? Of, uh, the for some antigen, yes, I have. For example, for the 25, uh, I know that uh, when you ask me, okay, Juzi, can you suggest me TD25 in PE, for example, I prefer the clone uh, 2A3. Or also for the CCR7, we have two clones in catalog, and uh, I know that uh, one is better than the other. Uh, how we can know only testing? Oh. I'm sorry. Yes. The suggestion, I don't think it's reported. I'm not, uh, in this moment, I don't remember for mouse, but we can check with colleague. Uh, obviously, if we have, uh, we, can sh we, we share information. Uh, is it okay to use tandem fluorochrome in this kind of mm -hmm. panel? Yes, because of course. How many, because sometimes they no, no, obviously you can use all, all the fluorochrome you have in lab. So today I, I, I refer to new fluorochrome but to give you some news about uh, the, uh, the new reagent. But uh, you have to apply the same rule in standard fluorochrome. 50, 50, 50, 50. Uh, as with tandem? No, for, uh, tandem, don't use sky of tandem fluorochrome. If the fluorochrome is good, it works well. If the fluorochrome is 
very very cold for example if you call me okay Joseph I have uh, a CD350 it's five five years ago <laughs> can I use it okay I, I, I can't hear but okay I say you maybe use uh, more uh, more reagent but it can work without not big problem if you call me okay is you say I have a CD 19 P CY7 expired five years ago hi here and uh, in, in, to be honest I don't suggest you to use it why because the tandem is more sensible to light to temperature so what is the balance you can use it but if it, if it, it works well okay you have your results but if uh, if uh, it's performance yeah, because normally we use tandem from the same day for example just for two days yeah. but, but for the next day it's not the same result. you fix the sample <coughs> or not but if you fix it uh, no no problem no, no it's not so sensible uh, uh, my attention is a uh, my recommendation is to put also when you um, bring the, the antibody from the vials and you look if it's violet light 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 violet okay <laughs> but it's dark the quenching is uh, is happen so I don't say you don't use any way, no, it's not possible. I, I suggest you, okay, pay attention and consider the importance of your experiment. If I try, okay, I can repeat, I can do another thing anyway, you can. But if uh, the, the last mics I have in my study <laughs> and so on, <laughs> Uh, this is an habit that many labs have, to be honest. We don't recommend it because, because we can't preview the interference between the reagents. These reagents, for example, are all polymer and are prone to, to do sticky. So many, many labs uh, do the master mix and use it. Uh, in my recommendation, no more for one week. No more. So we agree on the same point. Uh, we can do, but uh, we are uh, aware of the risk. Uh, I talk about that in a later presentation. Uh, about master mix and we use in diagnostic because um, even now we uh, it's a different context and, uh, for us is an internal control to use the master mix on uh, uh, many days and many patients mm -hmm. uh, to have a, a cross control uh, in our experience we use the master mix we prefer mix for about uh, uh, 10 tests that we um, supposed to use in about uh, one week uh, more or less but uh, some mix can uh, be stored for more than one week we use mix for one month without uh, without, uh, mm, yeah. without uh, how many color you use? Uh, seven to eight without uh, without in my experience but, uh, but I don't suggest our habits is to prepare the mix for about one week and no more but sometimes 
uh, can happen that you store the mix for uh, for more time, and we don't have so many problems. But um, we use um, to prepare the mix for um, as can I say a standard panel mm -hmm. that we are um, sure and uh, we uh, are um, comfortable in uh, analysis. We don't prepare mix for strange analysis uh, for one patient uh, with uh, strange uh, uh, expression. You don't have to control every day to no. Prepare. no. So the reason why we use the same mix uh, on many days to have cross control for the patient uh, and be sure of But you consider that in a clinician lab uh, you have this co cross, cross uh, control. Uh, yeah. If, uh, uh, if um, a no, patient uh, Come back to in the, to in, uh, in research in research field we use the we prepare the mix on the same day that we use the procedure. It's a balance with yeah. the practical uh, yeah. point yeah. and uh, obtain good results. Uh, for the near, uh, for the future development, uh, the flow cytometry has to develop a uh, new method of analysis. The parametric analysis is not more, not yet actual in this polychromatic scenario, but many analysis software, as Flojo has uh, our, offer this tool actually. But there uh, is a new method. For example, we are using genomic uh, fields uh, to see these different uh, visualization of data. So don't you look for strict expression, one parameter versus another parameter, but generation of more complex and more useful data. <laughs> all, um, above all, in uh, complex uh, samples. So that is a nature of software. Uh, it's not uh, generate. But the, 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 the development, uh, the research department is working. So we are <laughs> actually has BD at, at least, uh, but also our other brand uh, have instrument that uh, the, that do f 13 and uh, in few years, or in few months, uh, 50. Uh, 50 parameters. 50 parameters. 50 parameters. And this is uh, with how many lasers? Five? Uh, no, no, not. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be five or more laser. Mm -hmm. Depends because uh, the instrument can be choice uh, until uh, maybe 10 laser, choosing uh, between more uh, 20 different lines. So, but some are very, some laser. Is very very uh, nick uh, um, request from few user for specific application. For example, the switch we have in the, the last years is the request for the near UV, 375 uh, nanometer laser to the UV laser, 305 uh, 5, 55 nanometer laser which is the point. Until the introduction of this fluorocom and others, we don't have dye for ultraviolet. So ultraviolet laser was required for side population or for the use of some dyes, specific dyes, calcium in flux uh, or other specific. And in general, instruments are configured with only two detectors for this laser. Actually, the new instrument has six parameter for this. So is a, is a culture changing uh, and uh, together with this um, strong uh, impulse, uh, 
we have also the tool of analysis because uh, is a uh, in my opinion yeah. but uh, i i see also from the question i receive uh, what do you think about this visualization what i can yesterday we talked about the poly poly cytokine profile actually th1 th2 th17 is a small group inside the t helper scenario because the subset is very big uh, 